Saudi Arabia is planning to build a futuristic city that looks like it's from a science fiction movie. It's a really long and tall city, 170 kilometers in long and 500 meters tall. This is taller than the Eiffel Tower. The city is only 200 meters wide and has big mirror panels on both sides. There will be green spaces and lots of advanced technologies. Building this city could cost up to $1 trillion, and Saudi Arabia says it could be done by 2045. But is this really possible? What are the pros and cons of this design, and how might it affect the rest of the world? Let's find out in this video. Whenever Saudi Arabia is mentioned, two things come to mind first, desert and oil. Although it is true that most of the country is surrounded by deserts, a typical desert climate is seen in Saudi Arabia, where the temperature can reach up to 45 degrees during the day and gets very cold at night. But apart from this, Saudi is a very diverse country geographically. Here you will find savannas, mountains and volcanic fields too. In fact, there are more than 2,000 dormant volcanoes in Saudi Arabia. Many of them are active volcanoes. Saudi Arabia has the biggest economy in the Middle East and the 18th largest worldwide, but most of its money comes from selling oil. Saudi Arabia is the world's top exporter of oil. Because the world wants to use less oil, Saudi Arabia is trying to reduce its dependence on oil for generating money. Other countries in the area, like the United Arab Emirates, have also worked to stop depending so much on oil. That's why Dubai has now turned out to be a big tourist destination. Saudi Arabia has a plan called Saudi Vision 2030. The goal is to improve the country in areas like health, education, infrastructure, tourism, and exporting things besides oil. As part of this plan, they're creating the Neom Smart City. Saudi's crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, is putting a lot of effort into developing this Neom Smart City. Neom isn't just one city. It's a whole region with many cities, resorts, and other projects. The entire Neom area will cover about 26,500 square kilometers. It's located in the northwestern part of Saudi Arabia and north of the Red Sea. They picked this area for a reason. The weather here is more moderate compared to the scorching heat in the middle of the Saudi Arabian desert. Being close to the Red Sea makes the climate more comfortable in Neom. The term Neom consists of new and em. New is a prefix from ancient Greek meaning new. The M has a dual significance. Firstly, it stands for the prince name, Mohammed bin Salman, with the M coming from Mohammed. Secondly, it represents an Arabic word, mustak ball, where the first letter is also M and it translates to future. The intention behind Neom is to create an exemplary city that symbolizes a new and promising future. As per the developers, Neom will consist of 10 projects, each referred to as a different region. Details for four of these regions have already been revealed. The initial one is Oxygen, characterized by its octagon shape and serving as a floating port. This area is envisioned as Neom's advanced industrial center for the next generation. The second region is Trajina, set to become the Arabian Peninsula's primary outdoor skiing destination. It's scheduled to open in 2026, just three years from now. Notably, Trajina has successfully secured the hosting rights for the Asian Winter Games in 2029. Situated in one of the highest mountain ranges in Saudi Arabia, where winter temperatures drop to zero degrees Celsius, it's interesting to note that the snow in this area will be artificial. This is because, naturally, there isn't much snowfall in this region. The third region is Sandala, a lavish resort complex situated along the coastal outskirts of the city. With a capacity to host around 2,400 people, this luxury island spans 840,000 square meters and offers a plethora of activities. Notably, Sandala is set to be the initial section of the Neom project accessible to the public, with its opening date scheduled for next year in 2024. Next up is our fourth and perhaps the most astonishing project, The Line. Its announcement on January 10, 2021, raised skepticism among many questioning if it was merely an idea or something that could actually be built. However, as of now, construction has already commenced, despite initial doubts about the existence of the technologies needed to make it a reality. The key highlight of this project is its design a 170 kilometer long line. The entire city will be positioned between two skyscrapers towering 500 meters high. 
These linear buildings will be aligned parallel to each other, featuring external facades adorned with mirrors. While the idea is not entirely new and had been proposed in the 1800s and mid-1900s, lack of resources and funding hindered its implementation. The city embodies a concept from the 1960s known as ecology, derived from the words architecture and ecology. In this field, architecture is employed to construct densely populated areas in cities with maximum efficiency and minimal environmental impact. The line, as part of this concept, is designed in a linear fashion to minimize damage to the surrounding natural landscape. With a width of only 200 meters and a length of 170 kilometers, its total area is just 30 for square kilometers. Despite this, the developers anticipate accommodating 9 million people, equivalent to the population of New York City. It's like fitting the entire population of New York City into just 1 20th of its area. The city is designed with multiple layers vertically, allowing people to move in three dimensions, up, down, and sideways. This innovative concept is called zero-gravity urbanism. Furthermore, the developers claim that Neom will run entirely on 100% renewable energy, utilizing sources like solar, wind, and hydrogen-based power generation. The transportation system will not involve traditional roads or cars. Instead, there will be dedicated spaces for walking, parks, and green areas. Given its 170 km length, high-speed transportation will link the line from end to end. The city will ensure that everything residents need is within a five-minute walking distance. The climate will be controlled to maintain a consistent temperature, even in the scorching heat outside. With the line extending to the Red Sea, it is also seen as having significant potential for trade, given that 13% of global trade occurs through the Suez Canal. Additionally, a Neom Bay airport is planned to be constructed nearby, strategically positioned so that 40% of the world and everything within it will be reachable within just six hours. This is facilitated by Saudi Arabia's central location connecting Europe, Asia and Africa. The developers also assert that artificial intelligence will play a seamless role in the line, both in personal and commercial aspects of life. Systems will be implemented to collect data, analyze it, and address individual needs for everyone involved. What would this mean exactly? It's challenging to predict, but there's a potential for the line to be somewhat dystopian. In such a smart city, constant tracking could be a norm, and ads or products may be tailored based on your movements. This poses a significant concern in futuristic cities. To some extent, this tracking already happens on the internet. The websites you visit track your preferences, likes, and dislikes. Platforms like Amazon and Google analyze your searches and interests to show you ads for products you've shown interest in. If this tracking were to reach a more advanced level, it could become even more invasive and potentially risky. There are significant challenges that might prevent the completion of the line project. The foremost and most critical obstacle is funding. The project is backed by Saudi Arabia's Sovereign Wealth Private Investment Fund, also known as the Public Investment Fund which is essentially a fund created by the Saudi Arabian government and is substantial, estimated to hold around $620 billion. However, two issues arise from this. The primary challenge lies in the dependence of that fund on the Saudi economy, which is heavily reliant on oil. The fluctuating market prices of oil can significantly impact the financial stability of the fund. In 2020, Riyadh faced a fiscal deficit of $79 billion, largely due to the reduction of price of oil, emphasizing the vulnerability of a country where 60% of resources are directly tied to oil. In 2021, only 9% of Saudi Arabia's exports were non-oil exports, highlighting the dependence on oil revenue. Even if the entire $600 billion from the fund is invested in the line project, it may not be sufficient. The original plan aimed to complete Neom by 2030, allocating $500 billion for it. However, some reports suggest it might not be finished until 2050, potentially leading to increased costs. The estimated cost of the project may be risen to as much as $1 trillion. Given this, other investors are needed, and while discussions have taken place with foreign companies, Saudi Arabia has struggled to attract sufficient foreign investment for this ambitious project.
The second significant challenge is the required technology. The LINE project envisions the use of technologies that do not currently exist. For instance, their proposed transportation system, described as a high-speed transport covering the 170 km line in just 20 minutes. This implies speeds exceeding 500 km per hour. Presently, there is no technology available for such high-speed travel. The Shanghai Maglev train holds the title of the world's fastest train, reaching around 430 km per hour. Although, in a test run in 2015, a Japanese maglev train hit a record speed of 603 km per hour. However, achieving and sustaining such speeds in regular operations remains a significant technological challenge that has not been overcome yet. Likewise, the construction of 500-meter-high mirrors, a unique aspect of the project, has never been attempted before. Creating such large mirrors over a span of 170 km remain uncertain. The third concern revolves around environmental impact. Despite claims of minimal environmental impact due to its straight line design, the installation of mirrors on the exterior raises questions about its effect on animal movement, particularly posing potential dangers for migratory birds. Additionally, creating a continuous wall without spaces for animals to cross can significantly disrupt the movement of land animals. Moreover, Criticism has been directed at the project's portrayal as highly sustainable with zero carbon emissions. Building two 500-meter tall glass-covered structures of such length using low-carbon materials is deemed exceptionally challenging, if not practically impossible. UNSW professor Philip Oldfield highlights that achieving the goals of the line project would demand an enormous amount of steel, glass, and concrete. The construction of the line alone could result in the release of 1.8 billion tons of carbon dioxide, nearly equivalent to the UK's carbon emissions over a four-year period. This environmental impact has drawn criticism, particularly when Neom won the hosting rights for the Asian Winter Games in 2029. The choice of hosting the Winter Games in a country without a natural setting for skiing raises questions about the extensive use of artificial environments and the impact on energy and local water resources. Architectural problems arise with the line's design. While it undoubtedly saves space, it introduces inefficiencies, particularly in the transportation system. With the entire city aligned in a straight line and only one transportation route connecting different locations, all 9 million residents will rely on this single route. This creates a vulnerability where any issue along the 170 km route could lead to delays in the transportation for the entire city. This single point of failure poses potential dangers and challenges for the overall design. The ultimate challenge lies with the people. Even if solutions are found for all the technical and environmental challenges, the crucial question remains, will people want to live in such a city? Imagine spending 24 hours in a city where you are entirely isolated from the natural environment, residing in artificial structures. If you desire to step outside for fresh air, you'll be met with an environment surrounded by mirrors. Meanwhile, when indoors, constant surveillance by the government, continuous tracking and monitoring may create an environment that feels less like a habitable city and more like a science fiction dystopia. What is your opinion? Would you like to live in such a city? Write in the comments below. If you found this video informative, please subscribe. Let's meet in the next video. Thank you.